Hi, my name is Bam, and today we're going to be talking about how to use the Melty Blood practice mode. For some reason, I get this question a lot, even though I think practice mode is pretty self-explanatory. So let's go over it. Uh, action status standing. Your character is standing. Probably the most used one. Jumping. They jump. Crouching. They crouch. CPU. I've honestly never used this, but it makes this that way. They fight back. And he just keeps command grabbing me, apparently. I hate command grabs. Controller, you plug in a second controller, and you can control player two. Um, all that, pretty straightforward. So, this is also pretty straightforward. No guard means they just get hit in the face. You practice combos, this is probably what you're going to do. Guard all pretty self-explanatory. They guard everything. This includes cross-ups, lows, overheads, whatever you want to do. Guard on active status. Now, what this one means is they only guard whatever your action status is. So if the character is standing, like so, they're not going to block low. It will only block over it. So if you change it to crouch, this means they will not block overheads and they will only block lows. So that's what that does. Um, okay, on to guard timing. I guess this one could be a little bit confusing. Default. This means they block everything all the time. They're just holding block. Essentially what they're doing. Guard timing during means they block after the initial hit. So, you can hit them, and it's fine. Hit them, and it's fine. But if you hit them, and it doesn't combo, they'll block. Apparently they block for a long time. See? That's what during does. Initial. Now, what initial means is they block the first hit, but nothing after. See? Guard timing random means you have no idea if they're going to block or not. This is used for testing, hit confirms, and things of that nature. Okay, on to tech throw. Pretty self-explanatory. If it's on, they're going to break the throw every time. It's random. Sometimes they're going to get thrown. Sometimes they're going to break it. Pretty self-explanatory. CPU level, this just has to do with... If you set enemy action status to CPU, you can turn up the difficulty that way you know they try harder or whatever i don't know i've never used this so i have no idea why you would use it or what you would use it for i guess some people might practice against it to get more comfortable but i've never used it in this game so counter hit self-explanatory once again counter hit you turn on counter and we have them blocking hold on two seconds and they get hit and it's a counter hit this way you can test, you know, counter hit combo. Now we're going to talk about counter hit random. So what this does is so you can practice counter hit confirms. You can see on the left side, underneath my inputs, of course, it randomly counter hits. You never know when it's going to. See? So that one's pretty useful. That's one of the more useful aspects in the enemy basics area. But now we move on to dummy enemy. This is probably what you're going to use the most in practice mode. And the reason is, start dummy recording. This gives you control of the character you're against. You can record for quite a long time. I forgot the exact amount of frames. I think it's like 2,000 frames. But, reason this is so good, you can use it to record enemy block strings. I don't know if I did this block string right. Oh, I did. Okay. So I recorded this block string specifically because it's cheap. Look, he armors everything, and you get command grabs. You block, you command grabbed. I think if I do it right, it's actually a true block string, and you can't jump. But I recorded it wrong. Whatever. It's not important for this. This video is just getting you the basic premise. So now we talk about this mode, dummy playback. Off means it won't play anything. Self-explanatory. Repeat in intervals, it just keeps repeating. See? It's just going to keep doing it over and over and over again. Reversal action. This means 
It does it after it gets hit or blocks or whatever. So it's waiting for you to do something and then it will play back the recording. Guarding or hit changes it. So hold on. Let's go here to reversal action. You can see reversal action is now grayed out because the playback is the reversal action. What guarding or hit does, you can set a reversal action and it will play after that. Hopefully that makes sense. I can actually show that off if you want. Um, we'll do reversal. We'll do this. He's gonna do that, and then he would play the record. I don't even know if the recording will play actually. He's doing this. Yeah, that was a long animation. Uh. Yeah, see, he did the moon drive because he was trying to do the block string. So that's what that does. Okay, let's turn that off. Dummy slot. You can have multiple recordings. So, you know, you can record this character doing this, whatever. That's recording slot one. And this. Bop, 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 bop. That's recording slot two. So you can have multiple recordings like this. Makes it real simple to just test out a bunch of stuff. Random dummy playback. What it does is it randomizes the recordings. So it'll randomly do, you know, one, it'll randomly do two, let's reset, one, 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 two, 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 one, see, and it says playing dummy, one, you can see it right underneath, like, the combo damage and stuff, you can turn that off, so that way you don't know, and you can use this to practice reacting to different scenarios. I'd recommend always having it off. I don't know why you would honestly want it on, but yeah. Anyway, on to reversal action. So what this does is you can set it to do a reversal anything. What reversal means is it comes out the first possible frame that it can. So for this, we'll just do stand A. You can set them to guard all, and then see, it will match stand A. Okay. That way you can know what trades, what counter hits, but it's too slow and you'll get mashed on. That's actually an interesting interaction. But yeah, that's what that does. Very useful. Again, you will use this entire section probably the most, the dummy enemy section. Anyway, let's turn that off now. And move on to enemy recovery. You can have off and they won't recover at all. Uh, see, they just fall to the ground. Vertical. See? See, tech up. Backwards. Tech back. Forward. Obviously, they're going to tech forward. Random direction. Obviously, it's going to do different directions every time you do this. He's just going to keep teching in the same direction just to make this video worse. <laughs> Whatever. You get the point. All random, what it makes it do is not only will he tech in all the directions, he'll also sometimes not tech at all. So that's what that does. No settings makes it so that way you can change aerial and ground recovery. So if you do no settings, then you can adjust these and change how he, how he recovers. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to show this off. I think you get the gist of it. No reason to make the video more drawn out than it needs to be. Life gauge. So self-explanatory. Auto recovery on means their health comes back after you hit him in the face. Wow. Auto recovery off means their life bar never recovers. Pretty self-explanatory. Max life gauge, again, self-explanatory. You just delete your health bar. You delete his health bar too. See? Magic circuit. Okay, so what this does is it has to do with your meter in the bottom left or right, I guess. Depends if you're player one or player two. Auto increase basically means that you'll always get a bar back. See, it just refills after a few seconds of you not doing anything. Probably the best setting to have it on so that way you don't do any combos that are fake. By fake, I mean you spend like eight bars in one combo because that's just not possible. Auto decrease means it goes down to zero every time so you can see how much meter a combo builds 
Always max means you have infinite meter, which means you can just do things like eight times in a row. And it, you probably don't want to do this unless you're making just fun little stupid combos, because otherwise you might end up using more meter than you can in a combo like this. Right there, I spent five bars. Can't do that. Uh, default. So default makes it where it's at zero. See, if you if you reset, it goes to zero. You hit them and it builds up. You keep whatever you built. So it's just like playing a real game, basically. That's what default does. Um, this makes it so if you reset, you can have a bar. Maybe you can reset and have half a bar, depending on how much meter you want. That's actually very useful. This is typically used. You can see it used a lot in like Dragon Ball Fighters and like Marvel, where people try to find touch of death combos with like half a bar and stuff like that. I think it's pretty useful. I don't know how many people will use it in this game. How much people value meter. I think meter is really important in this game because combos don't do much damage. So typically when you're thinking about whatever is the best combo, it's whatever combo builds you the most meter. At least in my opinion. Moon Icon. So Moon Icon is obviously your moon gauge. And what it does is just reset. Oh, it's gonna... I don't feel like doing this. Okay, basically, fast recovery means moon gauge comes back really fast. Fast recovery, 50%, means it comes back at 50% of that speed. Default means it will take forever to come back. That's the best way to do it. I'm, I'm not going to show it off because it's going to take a minute to drain it and this and that. Awakened player basically means you get an extra bar meter. See, bottom left, three. Now it has four. Do that for you and the opponent. Character settings, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. Like, he has flame, he has ice, you know. It, it's just the different styles these characters have if you want to practice against it. Quick select. You can just change your characters really fast. You can change your stage really fast. No need to do that, I don't think, right now. It's very useful if you want to lab against multiple characters, though, to just quick select. Training display. Self-explanatory. Damage display. Shows your damage. Input history shows your input history. The little number next to your inputs, for those of you that don't know, is the amount of frames that you've hit that button. So, like right now, I've done nothing, and you can see it going up. It just hit 500, because I've done nothing for 500 frames. It just keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up. If you do an input like this, my quarter circle forward motion, I held down for two frames, down forward for two frames, forward for three frames, and I hit A for one frame. Anyway, on to other stuff. Input lag, self-explanatory. You can make the game super laggy. I would never do this, ever. I don't care if you only play online. I would never, ever do this. Ever. So bad. Remove menu. It closes the menu, and you just return to the game screen. So this is what it does. This way you could, like, freeze frame it and look at stuff. You could freeze frame supers, look at supers. I don't know. I've never used this, honestly. But, anyway. On to other stuff. Restart. Restart center means you always start center stage. Left side, you start on the left side. Left side facing right, you start in the corner. Same with right side. Right side facing left. See? Super simple. Command list. You look at the command list. Self-explanatory. The rest of this does not really have to do with practice mode. So I hope this is useful. I can't believe how many questions I get about practice mode, because to me it's pretty self-explanatory, but I've also played fighting games my entire life, so maybe I'm in the minority. If you found this useful, please leave a like on it, please subscribe. I can do more in-depth practice mode tutorials, like how to find things, like find setups, find whatever, if you guys want that. And I will see you guys next time. See ya!